Hey guys, what's up and welcome to the Redstone Handbook episode 5. A series of videos designed to teach you the fundamentals of redstone so that you can start to create your own designs and understand how other people's designs work. In this video, we are going to be going over clocks. Clocks are a redstone circuit that sends out a pattern of pulses which repeats itself. We're going to be going over many clock designs today, so let's hop right into it. Ah, not this again. So number one guys is the rapid fire clock. Rapid pulsar clocks, as they're also known, use the rapid firing of torches, powering the redstone above, which then turns on the dispenser. So guys, this uses the burnout functionality of redstone clocks. When they pulse too fast, they burn out. So when this redstone torch turns on, it will turn this redstone on, which will then turn the redstone torch off. And this happens so quickly that it will burn out. But as soon as it's burnt out, this one will be ready to go. And then as soon as this one burns out, this one will be ready to go again. So we get the fastest we can of this redstone pulsing here. So if we turn the redstone line off, as you can see, it pulses very fast and we get some rapid dispensing. And as you can see, they take turns burning out back and forth like so. And we get all of the items in here dispensed out very, very quickly. Now, a repeater clock does much the same thing. We have two repeaters facing in opposite direction with two redstone dust on either side. The way to get this going is to give it a one tick pulse, which you can do by placing a redstone torch on top of a redstone block like that. And there you go, it'll pulse. Now, all you need to do is take the redstone off this way into a light or something. And there you go. This is the torch repeater clock. Now, it's pretty cool. We'll just flick this off here, and we've got both lights going at opposite times here. This is the comparator clock. Now, this toggles on and off every tick, like this, very nice and quickly. Rapid dispensing as well. This is the fader pulsar. As you can see, it gives off a one tick pulse, which you can tell because the piston spits out its block, which only happens if you give it a one tick pulse. Now it works on the fading power of the redstone here, as you see, it keeps going down, and when this torch gets powered, it gives us a one tick pulse, which is actually very useful. The hopper loop clock has two hoppers facing into one another that bounces one item between them, giving up a four tick pulse that is also off for four ticks. Like this, we have one item in here. As soon as we unpower this, there we go, four ticks up, four ticks down. All you need is the two hoppers like this. You need to power this hopper if you want to turn it off. Then you have a comparator coming out into the block. Very easy. To increase the time between pulses, you can just add more hoppers going around in a loop as shown in this. So this one's facing into this one, this one into there, this one into there, and the item will go round. Now it will still pulse for four ticks, but it will have a larger gap in between. Like that. The Etho Hopper Clock from my absolute favorite YouTuber of all time, Etho. This is a very customizable clock that can be used to get very precise timings of up to 4 minutes and 16 seconds. Now if we come around the back here, we can see that these two hoppers face into each other. The more items we have in here, the longer the time will be between uh, things. So if we just turn this on, we'll have them go over here and you can get your output from the front here. So if you get some redstone, you pull it out the front like this and now it's off. And when those items have moved back to the other side, you'll see it will pull back this way and you've got an output. So guys, the hopper clock can be made to go up to four minutes and 16 seconds. Like I said, that would be a full hopper here, full of 64 items each. Make sure you do not put any more than that or it will not work because these hoppers need to be at least, one needs to be empty at a time. And you, you can't do that if uh, you fill this up and put some in here. So if you fill that up, that's good. We can also chain these together. I'm not going to show you how to do that, but you can chain them together to get like unlimited amounts of time if you want, like ridiculous amounts, like hours and days and years and things. And you only need like three of these to get to like years, I believe. Lastly, we have an old design that isn't really used much anymore, but I thought it was pretty cool, so I'm showing you anyway. This is the five minute despawn timer that relies on the despawning of items. Items take five minutes to despawn, so we can throw one on a pressure plate in here and wait till it despawns and when it does it will send a pulse through to this lamp here and when it does that it will also eject another one from the dispenser to sit on there so if i unpower this it's going to put one out there and there you go it's off and when this despawns in five minutes i'm just going to simulate that by picking up the item we'll see that lamp flash and then it will uh, throw another one out but i picked that up as well anyways guys that's that's really simple you put a pressure plate with a redstone torch under it a dispenser a dropper sorry with everything in it that you need and the output comes out from here very easy okay guys now you have the basics of clocks go out and test them 
read the wiki page and see if you can understand even more about clocks and maybe even invent your own. On the next episode, we will be going over soft and hard powering of blocks. Check out the other episodes of the Redstone Handbook in the description, hit that like button if this was helpful, and I will see you guys in the next episode.